many. When you do that, you encourage them. Amen. Uh, I'm so glad. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to stand here and share not just anything, but his word. The Bible says that his word, the entrance of his word brings light. The entrance of God's word brings life, brings hope, brings provision. My prayer is that that word will bring you that which you came seeking. I want to believe that when you woke up in the morning and in the morning it was chilly, the, you came seeking for something. I want to declare from this altar you will not be disappointed because the Lord has been waiting on you. And I want to encourage you. The other day the Lord was reminding me that whenever you go to the Lord, remember there is nobody else in front of you. God is not a human being. That he has a wrong queue and you are a number 10 and you are queuing. When you go to your father, it is you and him. So I want you to know that you are in front of your father and he knows the desires of your heart. Be encouraged this morning and receive from your father because he knew you would be here. Since the month of April, the Lord has been taking me on a journey. And he, it's like every day he has been echoing it back that it matters so much what I think about myself. Leave alone what other people think, what I think about myself. And I know I've so, told these several people or several places where I've had an opportunity to speak of late, of an encounter I had in one of those quiet moments and um, there was a conversation between me and the Lord. And then he asked me a question. What have I said about you? Ah, you can be sure I had so many things I have known he has said about me. I am at the upper of your eye that you love me. You have engraved your, my name on the palm of your hands. I had many things I know God has said about me. Then it was like a conversation. The next question was, what do others say about you? Eish. Of course, I had, and I wanted to be, remember I was alone, eh? Okay, me and God, eh? So I was praying. So I told him, some say I'm good, some say I'm bad, some say I'm short, some say I'm plump, all those things. And then came the third question, and the third question was, what do you say about yourself? We started by what God says, what others says, then we narrowed down to me. What do you say about yourself? I had a temporary dementia because I, dis I discovered if I were to answer immediately, uh, there was a lot of negativity. And I came to conclusion. Then finally, before I left the place, I heard the voice say, start saying, what I have said about you. You will never go wrong. And I want to encourage somebody this morning. I don't know what you're saying about yourself. I've given you the answer. Start saying, I am saying I'm not good enough, but God, you say, I can, you say I can do all things. Start saying what God has said about you. You will never go wrong. I discovered there and then that many times, I am the worst critic of myself, or you are the worst critic of yourself. So for many of us, we are our worst critics. But from today, I want to encourage you, start saying good things about yourself. If you run about, out of material, start saying what God has said about you. After all, he has described you. So it matters how, how you define yourself, before people, before God, and even before yourself. It matters. Because the latest I checked, there was no copyright of you. You are an original. So it doesn't matter. The problem comes when you want to be like so-and-so, yet she's the only one, he's the only one. Therefore, this morning, I want us to share for the next few minutes on a topic I'm calling breaking free from insignificance. Breaking free from insignificance or breaking free from a life of insignificance. I started by saying 
that many times you find yourself talking a lot of negativity about, negative about yourself, thinking negative about yourself. When shall I, my salary, my business, and it is always below. Very few times your mind will allow you to think. Unless you allow the word of God to transform you. By you talking about what God has said about you is when you allow the word of God to transform you and you start speaking what the word says about yourself. And this morning, in the next few minutes, I want us to remind ourselves, or I want to remind you, that you are designed for great things. The only competitor you should be having with compete against yourself. Endeavor to become better than you are yesterday. A revised version of you. God made each one of us to live a life of, a life of significance. I am here to remind you that even you, you have a divine deposit in you. As long as you have something divine, you are no longer ordinary. I have just said, you have a divine deposit in you. In the book of Judges, I would like us to read from the book of Judges, chapter 6. We will read from um, verse 11. Judges, chapter 6, verse 11 to 14. Oh, it's, yeah. Let's read from verse 14. This is a story um, about Gideon. If you read the whole of chapter 6, it starts by saying that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord. And the Lord decided to punish them. And now it is in that situation, that season, that we find this man called Gideon. And Gideon is hiding. Let's start from verse 11, sorry. Let's read from verse 11 so that we can get the whole story. Let's read together. Okay. And sat under the Tebnid tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the Abezrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you made a man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered into the hands of the Midianites. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the heart of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Hold it there. Here is somebody who is hiding from the enemy called the Midianites. And here the angel shows up. And the address is not ordinary. Go in thy might in my might, and I'm hiding. And I thought, maybe Gideon for a minute thought, this person doesn't understand grammar or doesn't know English. I am hiding, and you are saying, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. That is verse 14. Am I not sending you? He's not just told to stand out for himself. He's supposed to stand out for the whole nation of Israel. And he is hiding. And it got me thinking. God must have been seeing something more than Gideon was seeing. Gideon was complaining. Where are these miracles? And I am sure there are several Gideons here. They are wondering. They say you pray and you shall receive 
Seek and you shall find. I have been seeking, I have not found. I have been asking, I have not yet received. I have been knocking, the door is still closed. It looks like heaven has been closed up. There is a certain song from where I come from that there are some of, which says that there are some of us who even believe that the heavens have been closed. There are some of us who think that your heaven has been closed up and the, the, the line up there is busy. I have got good news that the thoughts the Lord has for you are better than you think. I pray that somebody may encounter God this morning in your situation. Whatever it is that you are thinking, like Gideon of old, you are going to encounter the Lord and he will be telling you a very simple message. He didn't tell you him, go and come with several machine guns. He didn't say that because his ways are not our ways. His weapons are not like your weapons. He told him, arise and go in the strength. Go, save yourself and save the nation of Israel. There and then, I want to believe Gideon got a revelation. If you read the whole story, he got a revelation that this was no ordinary encounter. Because he told the angel, don't go. Let me go back to the house. I, am, I want to bring an offering. How I pray that the Lord can prompt you. You will be sensing when it is God and you want to connect. That moment, it doesn't matter who is speaking. It doesn't matter who is preaching. It doesn't matter. Even a revelation from the word of God as you have your quiet time. I pray that somebody will sense and know this is no ordinary quiet time. Today the Lord has appeared to me in a very special way. And I would want to give thanks Somebody told us last week, there is no giving, there is no thanks without giving. I come again. There is no thanks without giving. If you are that grateful, it should prompt you to give something. You can give worship, you can give your service, you can give money. There are many things to give. How I pray that this morning, somebody will sense a divine visitation and know this is not ordinary. This is me, Lord. This is Gideon who is complaining. And remember, it was a consequence of what they had done. The Bible says they had done evil in the sight of God. But our God is merciful. He is a God of many chances. It doesn't matter how you found yourself where you are. As long as you are hearing me this morning, the Lord has another chance for you. How I pray that you will reach out by faith and connect and say this is mine because Gideon was told, have I not commanded you? You know if you hear that word, it simply means I'm talking to Moses. Moses, can you bring me that bottle of water? And Moses is just looking at me. And then I come back a second time, I'm talking to you. How I pray that the Holy Spirit will tell you I am talking to you. That you will arise. You have been complaining. I have been going around here. Whenever I am among my peers, I feel like I am the least. If you continue with that story, which we might not do this morning, Gideon had a list. My tribe is the least. Very serious, disqualifying himself from the assignment. I pray that none of you is disqualifying yourself from the many assignment. Because you miss it. When you obey, afraid. Do it afraid. I am telling you, we all know the story. Gideon did it afraid. He delivered the nation of Israel. You can get to that which you want, to, where you want to go. Do it afraid. Sense your moment of visitation. And whenever the Lord visits you, make sure you note it and you mark it. And God is faithful. Amen. And there are many people, many characters in the Bible who had disqualified themselves or who had been disqualified by others. You can disqualify yourself. You can be disqualified by others. For example, David had been disqualified in quotes by his father and his brothers. When his brothers were being trained to be soldiers in Saul's army, he had been left at home to look after the sheep of his father. Meaning, he was no soldier material. 
as far, as far as the father was concerned. That is why he had been left behind. And let me tell you, maybe you are here and there is a character somewhere who has decided to disqualify you. I am here to tell you, the Lord has already qualified you and you don't need their sanctioning anyway. What God has given an opinion about, he doesn't need your opinion. Neither does he need the opinion of your friend. Neither does he need an opinion of your family. David was here, disqualified. Is it a wonder when he came and he was asking the brothers, why are people so worried? They are all learning. The Bible says that they would see Goriath and run to the cave. And David is here. He wants to know what is happening here. Nobody was so interested and so keen. Actually, his brother Eliab was telling him, now what, whom have you left those sheep? Few sheep of yours with. You have come here to disturb us disqualified, dismissed. I am here to tell somebody, nobody is qualified to dismiss you because you are here for significance. You are here on a divine assignment and inside you there is a divine deposit. But let me tell you, David could have been assumed at home but he knew himself. How I pray that you will know yourself such as he had. That is why he volunteered himself to be taken to the king. And I love 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. This is the testimony David gave to Saul. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Hold that verse there. David may not have known a lot, but at least he knew where he was coming from, from tethering the sheep of his father. He knew he had been delivered from the paws of a bear, paws of a lion. Which paws has the Lord delivered you from? What testimony do you have? Because I know you are in church today. Because the Lord has ever done something for you. That is all you need to move to your next level. This is what David used to move to qualify himself for the next assignment. You have to qualify yourself for this assignment or that assignment. David have, had fought with a bear. He had fought with a lion, and he said, this one is too big. The experience I have with this God of mine, even this one, my God is greater. My God is able. This morning, I'm here to encourage somebody. Maybe you have dismissed yourself. Today, you are going to qualify yourself because of what God has said about you. You cannot afford, you cannot afford to join the devil whom the Bible has called the accuser of the brethren. Whenever you are disqualifying yourself, Today I'm calling out men and women to decamp from the enemy's camp and say I'm equal to this task. I am equal for the next assignment because God has said so. Because the Bible says the door he has opened, no man can shut. And I'm here to encourage somebody that the Bible is filled is full of ordinary people who lived extraordinary lives because they believed God would work in and through them. Are you one of them? Ordinary but extraordinary. That God will use you, will work through you, for you, and in you. Time may not allow us to talk about many people, but you all know, if you don't volunteer yourself, God will set you up. Like the way he, he did for Gideon. Nehemiah is another character. He tried convincing God. And he was told from the, your mother's womb. Moses was there, very busy. But let me tell you, because of the divine deposit, you will not succeed. Finally, you do that assignment. We want to move from the life of insignificance. Maybe you say... And your first statement when you are asked to talk to people, you know I don't like studying before people. Already you disqualify yourself and maybe everything else you want to say. From today we are changing. It is your first time to be given the assignment. You'll be saying, I have never, but because 
I've been given the opportunity. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So very quickly, I want us to go and visit one character who looked around and saw, ah, everybody seems to be frying when I'm crawling. Everybody seems to be soaring when I'm walking. I want to believe he was finding himself down there. But he discovered, remember I said, whenever you go before God, I want you to know there should be nothing between you and God. If you think there is, sins will separate you with God. Confess. Dawa ya thambi ni kutubu. Around nothing to be between you and your God. And I want us for the next few minutes to read this story found in the book of First Chronicles 4, 9 to 10 in NIV, if you can project it for us. First Chronicles 4, 9 to 10. Remember we are talking about breaking free to arrive of significance. By the way, this story, it has got a lot of genealogies before and even after. But right there in the middle of verse 9 and 10, we find this scripture of one gentleman who was seated maybe at Shiro, or maybe seated today at Shiro. And Jabez became like this person, maybe I always imagine, this person who sang the song, pass me not, O gentle Savior. I want to imagine it is how you are. Hear my heart, while on others thou art passing, pass me not, O gentle Savior. And Jabez realized, this God who is blessing others can also bless me. Shall we read together? Jabez was more honorable than his brother. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your heart be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Here is Jabez. Jabez. He's among his brothers. I don't know whether he, had, whether he had sisters. And he realized his life is different. And when he tried to check out, he realized even his name has such a negative connotation. Just because my mother bore me in pain, now he wants to name me pain. He has already defined me. But Jacob said, I am not allowing anybody to shape my destiny. I am even my mother. I am here to encourage you. Maybe your parents don't like you. Let me tell you when it comes to your relationship with God. As long as it is not because of sin, they should not define you. Because inside you, you carry divine deposits. And I want to qualify that. I'm not talking about dishonoring our parents. Actually, we know there is a blessing. You'll never find it anywhere. The only shop that stocks that blessing is by, through honoring your father and mother. So I'm not ignorant about that. But this time round, Jabez discovered, I can't live like this. There is a God in heaven who answers prayer. There is a God in heaven whom I can go direct. I don't need my father. I don't need my mother. I don't need my brother. I don't need my sister. Our sister, Wangeshi, shared with us in the youth service and reminded us, you are the only one who can make the best prayer for yourself. You are the wearer of the shoe. Maybe because she was preaching to the youth, she told us, it, made, it was a, little, a lot of fun. She told us, my generation, and those who are nearer my generation, we may not understand what they go through. They come and tell us, I have panic attacks. I am anxious. And you're wondering, are they panic attacks? <laughs> I was seated next to Brian Akanyambia. Mama Kiata Mwambia. Vasoeta. So the battles they are fighting now, when they come to tell you about LGBTQ, you will not understand. You start telling them, your mother will pray about malaria, 
Which was the other sickness? Typhoid. <laughs> Those are the sickness my generation know about. They are fighting other demons in their generation. And because you are the one in the battlefield, you need to fight it yourself. You either fight the devil or he will fight you. You better sink him or he will sink you. And one of the ways is you praying about it. Telling the king of kings, this is my challenge, I am here. Jabez got that revelation. I pray that Jabez is listening to me this morning. Will say that revelation because God knows your situation. I want to believe Jabez looked around and realized, I, my life, for how long am I going to be like this? That day, when he made that prayer, God singled him out. And today we are discussing about that Jabez. And by the way, very little we are told about Jabez. Very little. But the little that we are reading today made a difference. These two verses give all the information we have about Jabez. But they revealed that he lived a life that was anything but average. He was not happy with who he was. Do I have somebody in the house who is not happy about the life? You don't like about your pocket. You don't like about where you live. You don't like about your job. You have been stagnated in that career path. Do I have some people who are dissatisfied? Don't you worry. You are in the same WhatsApp group with Jabez. And this afternoon, Jabez gave us a way forward. And I want to talk about three things that Jabez did that made him break out and break free until he got a life of significance. Jabez stands out because of three secrets of his success. Secret number one, he had a great ambition. A great ambition. While many people are content with being average, Jabez wanted God to do something significant through him. He did want to live half-heartedly. He wanted a full and a meaningful life. Do I have some dissatisfied brothers and sisters in the house? Do I have them? By the way, I know you are. Ask me why. Why did you come to church? And you came for service? Church is for those who are seeking for more. I know you have something, but you came for more. You are in the right place. Jabez was ambitious. Just he was motivated by the right things. I want you to catch this. He was ambitious, but ambitious with the right things. It matters what you are asking God. It also matters the motive behind your asking. When you ask the right thing and you ask the right way, you will get it. How do I know? We read in verse 10 that God granted Jabez's request. When you are motivated by the right motive, God will grant it. How do we know Jabez's motives were genuine? And not selfish because we read and God granted his request God will never honor an unworthy request actually in the book of James the Bible says you ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss how I pray that somebody will get annoyed with where they are ask streamline your request with the word of God and be ready to receive set yourself to receive like David when he was given permission to go and fight Goriath, Saul was sympathizing with him. They tried, he tried dressing him up, but he realized this one does not fit me. Let me just use what I'm used to. Stones, but he did it. Let me tell you, when Gideon obeyed, the story we read earlier in the book of Judges, when he obeyed and took the challenge, going in the strength, your strength, did you know that he was not told to go in the strength of God? He was told to go in his strength. But God knew he will be there because he has already given his word. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So whatever it is that you are doing, be assured that God is with you. And let me tell you when Gideon took the challenge, in one of the instances, the enemies started fighting themselves. Let me tell you that 
God's ways are not your ways. Jabez had a great ambition. Many people just drift through life. They have no goals, no plan, no overall purpose. As a result, you'll never go anywhere. If you want to live above average, dream big, you are not meant to go through life wondering, asking yourself, what am I doing? Why am I here and not there? God wants you to have a great ambition fueled by the desire to serve him and to glorify him. Jabez had a great ambition. Remain to re refuse to remain average or below average because you are created to soar. Tell your neighbor you are created to soar. It doesn't matter right now where you are. Let me encourage you. I want to encourage somebody. You may not be, if you cannot walk, crawl. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot fry, run. Be moving. May the Lord drop some great ambitions in your spirit today that will fuel you to break the barriers, to break the life of average, the defeated life, because you are meant to soar. Remember we said, soar as yourself. Do not be intimidated but that others are making it. Instead of being intimidated, be inspired and say, if God has done it for her, he can do it for me. I want to speak to somebody. Don't allow people to intimidate you. Be inspired that God has done it. He can do it. It was meant to encourage you. Secret number two. Secret which Jabez had. Jabez, Jabez had. Jabez had a growing faith. He had a growing faith. Jabez had a deep trust and belief in God. There is no mention of him having any special ability or talent. The Bible doesn't say that he was wealthy or educated. He was just a common man like you and me with an uncommon faith. May the Lord increase your faith. One time, the disciples asked Jesus, increase our faith. May the Lord increase somebody's faith. Dear God, just ordinary as you are with an uncommon faith. There is something in life that is more important than ability and talent, and that is faith. Because faith sees beyond the barrier. Faith sees you on the other side. Because there are many super talented people who are sitting on the sidelines while people who have faith are making touchdowns. That shall be your portion. Do you want to be that, that one? Doing exploits because you have got faith. How do I know that Jabez had faith? Because granted, God granted his request. Remember, the book of Hebrews 11:6 6 says, without faith it is impossible to praise God. So Jabez had a growing faith. Faith is believing God will walk, work through you. So, how do you break from that life of insignificance? Have a great ambition. Have a growing faith. And thirdly, have a genuine prayer life. Genuine. We are in the season of praying and fasting. Don't answer me, but I want to ask you, are you part of it? You know, when I look like this, all of us look like we are praying and fasting. But you know the truth. Whether since we started, you have ever missed even breakfast, or even lunch, or dinner. Have you? Genuine faith. Remember, genuine prayer life. I said earlier, you are the best prayer warrior of your life. Because you are the only one who knows exactly how you feel about that situation. So you can, and you remember, you don't need to impress God. 
you speak to him in Kikuyu, you speak to him in Kimeru, you speak into Ki that language of yours. That's why you are that one. And God was so glad that he created you that way. Genuine prayer life. Jabez had a genuine prayer life. And it was the real secret to accomplishing his dreams. He prayed, oh, that you would bless me. Enlarge my territory. Provision. Let your hand be with me. He was craving for God's presence. Keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. And God granted his request. Jabez prayed for God's power in his life. He prayed, oh, that you would bless me. You might say, I shouldn't ask God to bless me. That is selfish. Excuse me. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. But now if you are so lazy even to ask even for yourself. Not for others. In the youth service, today it was very, it was very powerful. We prayed. The servant, the prophet of the day, made sure those of us who have not yet prayed in, we prayed. But what she, something she made a statement was, don't think other people are so keen to pray for you. Can I stop? Let me come closer. You came here for the ministry team to pray for them. And maybe the prayer request you gave them is related to what they are also going through. By the way, they also have their issues, eh? For your information, eh? They also have their issues. So, it triggered what is in their heart. Now you, you thought... <laughs> They are crying, praying for you. Could be they are also inside the mix. Excuse me. By the way, I'm not disqualifying them. I'm not disqualifying the ministry team. But I want you to know it is real. And when they go home, instead of continuing to pray for you, so you have stirred up. They now continue praying for themselves. You are forgotten. You are the only one who is reliable. If only you can cultivate a genuine prayer life. And pray for your destiny. Amen. And today we were singing that song from Ephesians 3.20. It says, God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within. Not without. Within. Within who? Say within me. A genuine player rife will push you to the rim right of a significant life because that power is working within you actually Matthew 19 26 says Jesus looked at them and said with man this is impossible but with God all things are possible let me remind somebody this morning when you engage God personally. I want you to remember with God all things are possible. Maybe you are feeling so cowed down but this morning I want to remind you you are not dealing with a human being. With God even that issue of yours it is possible and it is doable. Jabez prayed for power. According to God asking for a blessing is absolutely fine. He's not he's not looking there there is no cue. You can take yourself and present your issues. Actually, we sing, all who need rest pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So, Jabez wanted God's power, God, God's blessings. Number two, he wanted God's presence in his life. He prayed, let your heart be with me. He never mixed up issues. He asked for God's presence. Jabez knew that if he got more land and larger territory, he would have greater demands and more responsibilities. He knew he needed God's help with it. He wanted God's presence because the Bible says he's a very present help in time of need. You need God. Do not depend on your prayer partner. By the way, she can pray for you, he can pray for you. But it is best suited. And I think Jabez was so fed up. 
until he cried. I don't know for, at what point he was praying, but wherever he didn't care, he made sure God had what he wanted. So he asked for God's power. He asked for God's presence. And thirdly, he asked for God's protection over his life. He prayed, keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. So why does God, Jabez, ask for God's protection? Because he knew this. The more successful you are, the more critics and enemies you have. Do you know there are people, there are some enemies you require just because these days you look blessed. By the way, there's nothing you have done, but just because you look blessed, now you are, you are, you are in a new house, you are driving a new car, there is somebody. Let me tell you, this great enmity between Saul and David, where did it come from? Just because some women were dancing and celebrating David and said, Saul has killed a thousand and David has killed success. From that point on, Saul forgot. Eh? Saul forgot that they were fighting one common enemy called Goriath. And he moved to camp. Now he started chasing the very man who had delivered him. There are people who will just get annoyed just because you look blessed. Just because they heard that you got a new job. And because you not be jealous of yourself, you had better on your life and have a genuine prayer life. And run to ask God, I want you to cover me. It is okay. In the place of prayer, it is okay to say, cover me, God. Cover my children. Cover my husband. Cover my family. Why are you getting annoyed? Ask God. You have equal chance to tell God what you want. So, Jabez asked for God's power. He craved for God's presence. And he wanted God's protection. Maybe you are saying, I have prayed. I have fasted. I have not yet seen the answers. And as I wind up, I came across this character in the book of Esther. His name is Mordecai. Do you know without Mordecai there was no Esther? The Bible says Mordecai adopted Esther as a daughter. And in captivity, remember, he lost. He must have, at least we may not know all the people he lost, but at least we know he lost a brother who was the father to Esther. Are we together up to there? When they got to cap the captiv in captivity, he got a job, but as a watchman. But that one, he was still faithful with all his loss as a captive. And maybe as a father who had other children and plus Esther, but he still remained faithful. I want to encourage somebody to remain faithful while you wait for God. Mordecai remained faithful. How do I know he remained faithful? Because one day he overheard two officers planning how they will assassinate the king. And he decided to go and report. He sent for Esther and told Esther to go and tell the king there are two people who are planning to kill the king. And sure enough, when, when um, it was found out it was true, all those people, and those people were killed. However, they forgot about Mordecai. Nobody rewarded him. And maybe there are several Mordecai listening to me this morning. You have done great things. Nobody has remembered you. In your place of work, your paper is the, the, is the one that caused them to get that big tender. Even being rewarded with a thank you, leave her on a promotion. Nobody, in all your bosses now want to own that one. Yet you know it was yours. That was the life of Mordecai. But Mordecai remained faithful. How do I know he remained faithful? He was the coach to Queen Esther. He started coaching her, saying, don't disclose that you are a Jew. When he discovered that a letter had come and it has been signed and all the Jews should be assassinated, he still sent a message to Esther and told him, don't think you are a safe. You better arise. You never know why you are there at a time like this. He is at the gate as a watchman. The, daughter he, the do adopted daughter he had been coaching was already at the Paris. But this 
Mordecai remained faithful. Let me tell you God's ways. Do you know how God showed up for Mordecai? This day, this time round, the Bible says, if you read in the book of Esther chapter 6, the king could not sleep. How I pray that somebody will rack sleep because he's your destiny connector. Because he's their destiny shaper. Because he's carrying your miracle. He's carrying your job. That somebody will lack sleep. Somebody will pass by. I was just passing by. Yet he's carrying the message you have been seeking for. For Mordecai, he was still a watchman at the gate. Being very faithful with whatever he knew how to do. Esther is very busy there. You helped somebody, she became better than you, he became better than you. And these days you call them. And all of a sudden when your call goes through, it is, Ati nini, 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 hakuna network, excuse me. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. And even if that person does not celebrate you or even thank you, there is a God in heaven. This time round, God came through. The king in his bedroom. Excuse me, the king could not sleep. And let me tell you, it was a divine setup. And the king asked, what was done to that man called Mordecai after saving my life? The answer was nothing. And the king could not continue. He asked, who is there? Let me tell you, he was told it's Haman. The Bible says that, that Haman was bringing in a letter. For the Jews to die. And let me tell you, the Lord brought a confusion in the throne. And Haman thought we were talking about him. And then he said all the good things he would want. Somebody the king want to honor. And the Bible says, it's a very interesting story. Esther chapter 6. The Bible says, when he was asked, he gave... Because he, was thought, he, he thought it was about him. And now it became a command. Let me tell you from the watchman. Now he was walking loud the city. Wearing the robes. I declare that shall be your story. You may think you have been forgotten. You may think that the heaven is silent. But I'm here to tell you heaven is not silent. You have not been forgotten. The Bible says even a nursing mother can forget a sucking baby. But the Lord will not forget about you. He has actually put a tattoo on his palm. And the tattoo is written. Alex Kemani, excuse me. I am unstoppable. My help can come from the king. My help can come from the watchman. My help can come from my neighbor. My answer will come through you. And if you have my answer, you better bring it. Yes, you can break free from the life of insignificance. It is within your power. You can ask for God's power. You can ask for God's presence. You can ask for God's protection. You can ask it. And when even it seems that they have forgotten you, you are not forgettable. I don't know whether there is such a word. But you are not forgettable. Remain faithful like Mordecai. He was remembered. Can you imagine for all that time, since they came, still at the gate. And you would see people just being promoted. Akina Haman, they come and they are promoted. But let me tell you, when that day came, that Haman who looked like he had been promoted, he's the one who went to hang in those garrows he had prepared for him. I pray that the Lord will overturn tables here this morning. May the Lord overturn your tables this morning. There is that someone who heard that there is that is that this story as I sit down of two pastors. Both of them were, wanted to start a church somewhere. And by the way, I know one. So they were looking for a venue. Like the way now you can come to Zimmerman, you want a venue where to start a church. So they, each of them was looking for a venue. So they met. One had identified a place. And he shared with the other one. This other one, Kube, he didn't go home. He went to look for the red road of the venue. And he got to the venue. 
By the time we had identified the venue when the following day, it had already been taken by the other pastor. Now it is this other pastor who was giving a testimony. I want to tell you, in the kingdom, I was kupata barakazangu. I want you to know that it is within your power to break all the barriers, to live a life of significance. Because inside you are those deposits and you are meant to soar. The day you, you are shifted from kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, it may look like it has not, uh, your prayers have not been answered like Mordecai. It may look you start and they don't work out. But I'm here to encourage you. One more chance. God has not forgotten you. So are you tired of where you are right now? Are you tired? The Bible gives us the solution. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Jabez wanted his life to be different. He had a direct visitation when he called upon the Lord. Gideon wanted deliverance from the Midianites. He warmed up to the idea of the angel until finally he was able to de deliver the Israelites. So, this morning, I want to pray for you. If you are feeling that, sincerely speaking, where you are, when you are told to give, to talk about yourself, even when you go to pray many times, you don't pray because you are crying to God, Instead of asking, you are busy complaining. From today, we are shifting from the camp of complainers to the camp of askers in Jesus' name. Are you there? You are dissatisfied. You are current the status quo right now. If you lift up your hand, I want to pray for you. You want a, a visitation? Whether God will, will come through the Paris or he will come as you in your place of prayer, Whichever way, but you want him to come. Are you there? If you lift up your hand with an attitude of receiving, an attitude of receiving is saying, I am here. God have waited. I am here waiting and I'm refusing to give up. Father, we lift up the hands of faith this afternoon. We are telling you you are able. We are telling you we believe in you. We are telling you we know you love us. We are telling you we have got more than we can ask. We are telling you that God, you have not forgotten about us. We are saying what you have said about us in your word. That this afternoon you are able to give much more than we ask or imagine. We lift up our hearts of faith. And we know as we lift up you will provide. There are those who are looking for health. Oh God that you may single them out oh God in the congregation and let there be a mighty visitation. There are those seeking you with regard to their businesses. Lord you are able to turn them around. Those looking for jobs. I pray that jobs you look for them because God, you are God of all human. We receive by faith this afternoon. I pray the Lord you may change even our language. That from today we will start talking about a God who hears us, who answers prayer. That that will be our story. We honor you, we bless you because we ask this in Jesus' name. Are you there? We are talking about Engaging a God. Okay, celebrate Jesus. I like that celebration because you are celebrating your answer. Tell your neighbor, I am celebrating my answer. Tell your, the other neighbor, I am breaking out. I am breaking the barriers. I am defining myself according to the word of God. May it come to pass. And when the Lord does it, bring a testimony. Before I sit down, maybe you are there, you have never given your life to Jesus. We are talking about telling God what you need, but you have never met this Savior, and you would want to give your life to Jesus. Are you there? You have never invited Jesus in your life. If you lift up your hand, I would love to pray for you. Are you there? And you want me to pray for you. You have never given your life to Jesus. Nobody will ever get saved on your behalf. Lift up your hand, and we are going to pray for you.
Are you there? Jesus is knocking. Are you there? Father, I want to thank you for your word. Your word will accomplish the purposes for which you had set it, O oh God. I therefore pray for those who have never said to you, may your word pursue them until they say yes to your saving grace. Thank you for being with us. I pray for your word too, that the word that has come out for the Lord will fall on fertile ground, will pick it, run with it, O oh God, apply it, and bring results to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.